These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. Let's start with that. Well, remember that the main type of reaction here is a nucleophilic attack. So we're mainly going to be focusing on nucleophilic attacks on the carbonyl carbon. I'm going to keep encouraging you to asterisk the carbonyl carbon and the carbonyl oxygen through all the steps of the reaction. Now remember that this is going to be different from nucleophilic attack on aldehydes and ketones. For aldehydes and ketones, there were four different categories. I want to emphasize those four categories, category 1, category 2, category 3, category 4, they don't apply to carboxylic acids and acid derivatives. Carboxylic acids and acid derivatives are a whole different thing. They just have one main mode of attack, which is different from all those categories. Now the main driving force here is that nature likes carbonyl bonds. So anytime you lose a carbonyl bond, nature would like to reform the carbonyl. So you can see the basic pattern is attack the carbonyl and then reform the carbonyl. All right. The nucleophile attacks the carbonyl and then the carbonyl reforms. Now in order for the carbonyl to reform, the only way to make room for that is for the L group to leave. Uh, so L here basically stands for leaving group. All of these are similar because they all have possible leaving groups. This can't happen in an aldehyde or a ketone because the L group and the aldehyde or a ketone would have to be a hydrogen or a carbon. Well, those can't be leaving groups, so you can't reform the carbonyl. If you look at the four categories of attack on aldehydes and ketones, you'll see that we never reform the carbonyl there, and that's because there's no acceptable leaving group. But here we do have acceptable leaving groups, so the L group can leave and we can reform the carbonyl. Therefore, the biggest mistake that I find that people make is at this point, they lose track of who the L group is. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to look at this and see that this is the L group, but when we have this, this tetrahedral intermediate, it's easy to, remember, to forget who the L group is. Oftentimes, students mistakenly kick off the oxygen here, because that sometimes happens with aldehydes and ketones. But for carboxylic acids and acid derivatives, we're usually not going to kick off this oxygen. That's why it helps to asterisk it. We're just going to reform the carbonyl and kick off this L group. So at the beginning of the reaction, you have to ask yourself, who is the L group going to be? For example, who's the L group in the acyl halide? The halide. Yeah, the X. And who's the L group in the anhydride? The, um, the uh, the everything from the, the right of the oxygen over. That's right, including the oxygen. So we could indicate that by this. If this was symmetric, then it wouldn't, um, it wouldn't matter which side you look at. So if you focus on this as the carbonyl, then this would be the L group. It can help to even just put parentheses around the L group at the start to remind yourself. Who's going to be the L group in the ester? The OR. That's right. And who's going to be the L group in the amine? The NH2. That's right. And uh, right now we won't talk about nitriles as much. Something else we have to talk about is reactivity. Do you remember which of these is the most reactive? The, the acyl halide. That's right. Who's the next most reactive? Anhydride. Yeah, these are listed in order of reactivity. Another way of putting it, which of these is the least happy? Uh, the uh, acyl halide. Yeah, and this is the most happy down here. So is it easy to move up this chart or down the chart? Down the chart. That's right. I mean, you can kind of think of it as moving like downhill. It's easy to go downhill, but hard to go uphill. So it's easy to go from a, something that's higher to something that's lower, but it's hard to move up. So when we have a nucleophile that attacks an acyl halide, um, are we likely to need a catalyst? No. No, because it's so easy. We probably don't need a catalyst here either, but we probably do need a catalyst to attack an ester. And in many cases, we really can't attack a, a amide, because this is at the bottom of the chart. This is already as ha uh, very happy. So no catalyst, no catalyst, this probably needs a catalyst. Usually either acid or base catalysts okay. would work here. Okay. 
these are just rules of thumb. I guess there's some exceptions. But usually, nucleophilic attacks for these first two groups don't require any catalyst. Nucleophilic attack on an ester requires an acid or a base catalyst. And in many cases, we wouldn't get a reaction if a nucleophile tried to attack an, am an amide, because this is already at the bottom of the chart. Let's try to show the mechanism for what would happen here. Actually, we're on the right track there. So it looks like the, the point where you might have gotten a little stuck is this point right here. Let's stop and talk about this for a second, although you were figuring this out well. Now, basically, we're in this picture here. Correct. And this is the picture where I said people oftentimes get confused. We've attacked the carbonyl, mm -hmm. and the next step is to reform the carbonyl. And you figure that out. In order to reform the carbonyl, this oxygen has to kick its uh, electrons back down, mm -hmm. and we have to have a leaving group leave. Now, it might be tempting to have this leave because it has a positive charge. But that would be pointless because that would just get us back to where we started. So that, that's where it becomes so important to have identified the L group up front. Mm -hmm. Who is the L group in this picture? The CL. So we know up front that it's the chlorine that's going to leave at this stage. That's what I meant when I said that when you look at this picture, it's easy to forget who the L group was. It's much easier to see the L group in the original picture. So we have to be clear in our mind. Otherwise, you might make the mistake of thinking this is the L group and just reverse your previous step. Now, these arrows you came up with on your own, and these actually are exactly correct. So all you have to do is draw what the intermediate would look like from this. So let's draw what would the intermediate look like that's dictated by those arrows. I, you know, when I was doing I was thinking too far ahead about what I'm mm -hmm. going to use to deprotonate. Right. And this was confusing me instead of yeah, just following. Yes, I can see that. Instead of just following the steps. perfectly reasonable. So what you did here is we came up with this picture, but it's good that you didn't accept this as your final answer, because we know nature doesn't like a charge. So nature would like to have this lose a proton, to lose the charge. 
we have to come up with someone to take the proton, and you say, well, maybe another water molecule can take the proton. Well, that seems perfectly reasonable. We could have another water molecule take the proton. But more likely the, uh, the uh, chloride, the negative chloride would take You know, you can make an argument for drawing it uh, either way. There, there, are some, there are some advantages to the way that you drew it. I think maybe it's a little more conventional to show the chlorine taking it. I, I don't think uh, it's perfectly fine to think of the water. I'm going to show the chlorine taking it. That seems a, it seems a little bit neater, although there's arguments both ways. But I'll show it this way. Oftentimes, there's many different people that can do a final deprotonation. So I think it would be fine to use the water. Maybe it's just a little bit more elegant to use the chloride here. Like I said, people could have different opinions about what makes sense there. The important thing is this. The important thing is just getting the right final product. Uh, and that's what you ended up with. So that's good. <laughs>